I think the first time one of us comes across a chick tract, one of those little booklets uh, full of cartoons uh, showing us all the horrors that await us in hell and how Jesus loves us, but uh, God can't wait to cast us all into the pit of fire. We go through, uh, if we pay any attention at all to it, of course, you go through a few interesting and conflicting emotions. Uh, the first time I read one, I remember looking at it and going, boy, this is ever weird. Oh, well, I wonder why somebody left this on the bus seat. And then you stop and you think about it for a bit, and you go, whoever actually uh, believes this must be really weird. Um, because uh, I think at the time, I hadn't, I was a younger person, and I hadn't quite questioned my religious background to much of an extent. But still, at some, in some formative way, I kind of thought this is just too bizarre, and uh, oh well, I guess people believe just about whatever they want to believe. And then this insidious thought starts to creep up on you. Um, people actually believe all of this. There are people who actually sincerely believe that we're on the eve of destruction and most of us will end up in hell and God is this incredibly stern judge of humanity, etc., etc. And then you go, oh my God, if somebody believes this, then there must be other people who are going to get taken in by this stuff. And finally, of course, you just sort of go, this cries out to be parodied, and if I was any kind of a draftsman, that's exactly what I would do. I would parody the heck out of a, a chick tract and make uh, uh, absurd ones. Now, nowadays, uh, chick tracts have come into popular culture, mostly, I think, um, as parodies, because most people, even most Christians, don't their beliefs don't even come close to the extremism in, in this religion or I don't know if he even represents a religion, uh, just extreme Christianity or extreme Satan phobia or whatever, I don't know. Um, the Westboro Baptist Church, I think, would probably get along well with the guy who writes these tracts. And I think that uh, a lot of people, when they come across um, antinatalism of a particularly extreme kind, the morbid kind, often sort of go through the same emotions. People actually believe all this? Um, and now I sort of see that there are some pretty sane people who go along with uh, with the antinatalist point of view from, it looks like, intellectual conviction, and I can respect that. Um, but there still are, I guess you call them morbid or millennialist <laughs> antinatalists that seem to see wor the world as nothing but hell. Uh, you know, the ones that do the videos where all you see is people with massive burns or uh, an animal brutally slaughtering another animal and then eating them and uh, wars and all this kind of thing. Um, the kind of person that does really seem to think, they have this sort of Manichaean view that the forces of darkness are winning and the only way out of this mess that we're in is the hardest, or not even the hardest, but the most impracticable way imaginable. Uh, and again, it struck me that this cries out to have some sort of chick tract done about it. Um, <laughs> we've got the next best thing. Uh, it's it's well done, actually. It's it's not particularly harsh in the way that it uh, it criticizes people. And uh, I, uh, on this Halloween day, I just thought that I'd link to it. Um, it's a scary truth by. Um, a YouTuber uh, where he parodies a whole number of uh, uh, the YouTube antinatalists um, in a good way, I think. And I don't think that a lot of the antinatalists out there on YouTube would be terribly uh, uh, offended by the way that he does it or the way that the um, YouTuber does it. Um, contentment is wealth. Anyway, have a look. It's, uh, it's done in good taste, and it's worth a watch. Thank you. Oh, happy Halloween.